Hello there. Today I'm going to go over the benefits and the use cases for a Hall Effect sensor. I'll explain how to wire them up and how to add them into ESP Home. All right. So today I'm going to go over, for an example, a 3144E Hall Effect sensor. Now, what a Hall Effect sensor is, it is a sensor that is triggered from a magnet. So it's very similar to a read sensor. It's just uh, much smaller, in my opinion, much more reliable. So it's a very small switch and a very small package that is affected or triggered by a magnetic pole. So just for a quick example, a simple magnet. So again, on, off, on, off, on, off. All right. Not all Hall Effect sensors have the same specs, not are all built the same way, so make sure you read the data sheet. The one we're working with today requires 5 volts. So this is the front of the Hall Effect sensor. On the left, we have the supply. Now that, once again, uh, that's going to be 5 volts. We have the center, which is ground, and we have the right, and that is output. Um, we want to look at this as an output ground as well. When you put a magnet in front of the sensor, so it will bridge these two when you place a magnet. Take away the magnet, it'll, it'll open it up, bring the magnet back, and it will close these. So let's go to this diagram right here. So how do we use the Hall Effect sensor to turn on and off an LED? So we have our 5-volt source. We have our ground. Our supply is going to come down. It's going to connect to our 5-volt supply line on our Hall Effect sensor. And we're going to go to the positive side on our LED. Now, if we didn't have the Hall Effect sensor and we just took the ground and brought it to the ground, the light would light up. In this case, we bring our ground to our center ground pin, and then our output our output ground is going to go to our ground side. So when you put a magnet in front of this, it'll light up the LED. Now, benefit to this is you can also add uh, as many Hall Effect sensors if you'd like. And there's some other projects and there's some other use cases. Um, let's say you have, say you want to use these for a door sensor. On a small project, um, you have four doors. You can put one on all four doors instead of having a separate, uh, separate LED connected to each and to each and every one of them. You can have them hooked together as a group and have one LED. So in this case, our our supply and our positive from the LED supply from both all effect sensors is going to go to our five volt supply. We're going to go ahead and connect our LED to the output on the on our Hall Effect sensor on the end for output. On our first one in the chain, we're gonna bring our ground to our ground. So what we'd be missing at that point is the output on this one and the ground on this one. So what, what this one is missing is going to be the ground. So we are going to use the output ground on the first one to supply the ground on the second one. Both these would have to be triggered from a magnet in order to turn this on. Now let's move over to ESP Home. So what we're looking at here is slightly different setup. Now whether this is triggering a relay, just do want to note that in this case the LED is a 3.3 volt LED. Reason for that is uh, this, is an, this is a Wemos D1 Mini 8266, and it only outputs 3.3 volts. So in this case, we are going to connect the grounds of the LED, Hall Effect sensor, our Wemos. We're all going to connect it to the same ground source. That is very uh, important. Our 5-volt supply is going to come into our Wemos D1 Mini, and it's going to come over to the 5-volt supply leg of our Hall Effect sensor. We're going to bring our output over to D7. Now, in this case for Wemos D1 Mini, we can either use D1, D2, D5, D6, D7. Uh, we can get a little bit creative in some cases. I think you can use D8 and D0. Um, coding will be a little different. I don't typically re recommend it. The issue with the Wemos D1 Mini is if you have anything on 
well, if D3 or D4 is pulled low, which means it was connected to ground, it will not start up correctly. So if we had if we were, if we had this connected to D3 or D4, and this was tripped from a magnet, if the chip power cycled, it wouldn't come back up correctly. So in this case, we are going to utilize D7, connect to the Hall effect sensor. So the way we want this to work is when you put a magnet in front of the Hall effect sensor, it's going to output low ground on this leg. So what we're doing here is we're going to take D7 and we're going to pull it low. We're, it's basically connecting it to ground when you put a magnet in front of this. So this is going to be a binary sensor. Now on D1, we're going to have the Wemos D1 Mini act as a switch, which means when you turn it on, it's going to output 3.3 volts on that pin. So if you know if you don't want any logic and in, logic involved, and you're using a five five volt LED and five volt a Hall effect sensor, there's no reason why you can't wire it up. It's like you would here. In this case, though, it allows us to add some logic. So maybe we don't have LED. Maybe we have a relay. Um, there are multiple th different things that we can do, and I will get into that. So let's go ahead. And we're going to jump into the coding for this one. All right, as far as adding it into ESP Home, we are using a D1 Mini ESP A266. The name is Test LED. I have it connected to the Wi Fi. This is, uh, an, this is for the API for Home Assistant OTA that's over there updates. So this, for the most part, is pretty generic. All right, so this is our binary sensor connected to the D7. It does have an input pull up. Our name is Hall Effect Sensor. So you can find this in many examples. You can go ahead and type this in. You can pull it from my code and add it to yours. Uh, very simple. Uh, we're going to get to this here in a moment as far as delayed on, delayed off. We do have it inverted, which you can remove this or add it to invert the natural state. You have on press and on release. So on press is when you when you press it or you draw it down to ground, and then you have on release. So for this example, we have on press, turns on the LED. On release, it turns off the LED. Now as far as the switch, we have it GPOI switch pin is d1 when i put it went ahead and used an id and a name so name is led id is the led now in this case we have to use an id because we need to, to tell it what switch to turn on and you cannot use the name it has to be an id so as you can tell this is very, fairly simple um all right so we would you know we went ahead and we flashed it to our chip all right I uh, went ahead and flashed it to our chip. Now, if you watch in the example here, I can go ahead and turn this on, and it turns on. You also have the Hall effect sensor here, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, once again, this is a magnet. Put a magnet to the top of it. If you notice, it turns Hall effect sensor on, turns it off. Now, right now, it is set up to when I press it, which right now it's in press state, to turn on, release it, turn off. As you can tell, it's pretty reactive. I can turn it on. So it's already on. When I put it there, nothing. When I remove it, it'll disconnect it. Now we can go ahead and let's take this and let's say we want to add a delay, uh, add a delay for turning off. So we're going to add 500 milliseconds, which means when it's turned off, it'll take a half a second to actually register that it is going to turn off. So I'm just going to let this flash real quick. Wait for it to come back up. Now it's going to work here. If you notice on the screen, though, it has yet to connect to the Wi-Fi and the API. But it's still going to work here. It's just going to take a moment for it to pop back up and register. There we go. So if you notice, on press, 
on release, it takes a little bit longer for it to turn off. Now, let's say that let's say that we just want this to trigger. Or I'm sorry, say, say we want this to toggle the light on and off. So instead of switch turn on, we're gonna do switch toggle. Get rid of the release. There's no point having the release at the moment. Let's go ahead and get rid of the delay. Now you can add, you can do this and it'll turn green, which means it's not gonna read that, that line. All right, let's go ahead and reflash this. All right. We're waiting for it to come back online. If you notice on the screen, it will work. Wait for it to connect. There we go. Now we're connected again. It's on. Off. On. Off. All right, we can come back. And just to give you an idea of what invert means, so right now, if you notice, LED is off. Sorry, we're going to add the inverted to the to our switch. If you, if you do notice. If we go back and you will we'll notice there actually would have been the, the Hall effect sen sensor was on. All right, so if you notice now, the light is naturally on. We can, we can toggle it, well, we can toggle it on and off. So when you add invert, inverted, notice switches off, now it's on. So when we added inverted, it, it inverted the state of the switch. Using a filter for inverted on a binary sensor does the same thing, but it's uh, you enter it a little differently and it just inverts the natural state of the binary sensor. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. Uh, any, you know, please like and subscribe. If there's any suggestions uh, that you think I can add to this channel, please let me know. I'm slowly working on trying to be a little bit better at this. So thank you for tuning in. Please, uh, you know. Follow me for the next.